We have the promise of eternal life. This comes from 1 John chapter 2, verses 25 through 29. We finite human beings have a tendency to promise a lot of things. A good example are those New Year's resolutions we say we are going to do. But for the most part, never keep them. The things of life oftentimes take precedence over promises. For faithful believers in Jesus Christ, God himself has promised us something none of us can fully understand in our finite minds. He has promised us eternal life, a life of living with him, where we so easily break promises, God does not where we change so easily to the current trends of society. God never changes. True believers need to be steadfast in their faith and not waver to follow anything that is false and deceptive. The false teachers of John's day were spreading lies and deception to the faithful. John needed to reassure them that they need to abide or remain on the true foundation of faith they have. John says in verse 27, As for you, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Jesus said that he would send the Holy Spirit to teach believers and to remind them all that he had taught. John wrote about this in his gospel, chapter 14, verse 26. <clears throat> Believers have the Holy Spirit within themselves. This is the anointing. The Holy Spirit guides you to the truth. He teaches you truth because he himself is truth. There is a huge mark on on the charismatic church of today, or huge stain. Many false preachers and teachers want to fling or toss the anointing like they themselves can command God to do this or do that. Like the deceivers of John's day, the deceivers today are no different. They claim to know scripture, but their words and lifestyle totally identifies them as false teachers with a false doctrine. His anointing, meaning the Holy Spirit, teaches us all about all things. He is truth and there is no lie within him. It is heartbreaking to see many Christians eat up so much false teachings and doctrines. <clears throat> Maybe they just want to be seen as Christians and do not want to have a true relationship with Christ. Maybe they are on the fence Christians, not wanting to truly commit to Christ yet. <clears throat> Whatever the case may be, without the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to them, they will continue to take the wrong path that will never lead to salvation and eternal life with God. John really likes the word abide. John is saying that as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to persevere in our faith. We need to be steadfast, unmoving and unchanging in our commitment to Jesus Christ. This is the evidence of being a true believer. Our hope in Christ produces the effect of continually remaining committed to him. We long for his return and cannot wait to be with him. We are also confident and outspoken in our belief. We are bold in our commitment to him. The make believe or on the fence Christians are not bold and they are not committed to him. So they will be ashamed when Christ does return. They will be the ones who will shrink away. Now, does calling yourself a believer make you a believer? We can so easily say it with no outward effect at all. 
What is the evidence that you are truly a believer in Christ? The true visible proof of being a believer is the right behavior. That is practicing righteousness. Many can do good deeds and still not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Others may claim to know him and never do a good deed. The deficit will be the failure of faith or righteousness and will be the cause for shame when Jesus does return. True faith always produces good deeds or practices righteousness. Those who claim to be believers and who consistently produces good deeds can truly be called a believer. Still, Good deeds by themselves will not save anyone. They are the necessary proof that true faith is actually present in you. Being committed in your faith, living righteously, and righteous behavior tells the world you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Yes, eternal life is promised to the true believer. We need perseverance to withstand the lies and deception that Satan constantly throws at us with false teachings and doctrines that are so prevalent in the church today. The Holy Spirit reveals lies and deceit. He reveals the truth from the error. Christians are so easily manipulated and swayed by the feel-good sermons and music that they believe what they hear and experiencing is true Christianity. If it is not founded on the word of God, then it is false and a lie. There is but one truth, and that is Jesus Christ is Lord, and that all men need a relationship with him. To not have one means once he, once he does return, you will be judged and condemned. The time is now to reaffirm your faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe you have strayed and turned away from him. Come back to him now, this instant. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and that you commit yourself to him once again. This is a time to be steadfast in your faith and not turn away from him. God has promised eternal life. But it doesn't mean that all men will have that eternal life. Only true believers in His Son will find that gift, will find that reward. Deception and lie. We have so many of that in the church today. Your normal church-going Christian can easily eat up a charismatic's words from the pulpit. False teachings and false doctrine is so easily put on people because people do not know God's word. Simply opening the book up, up on Sunday doesn't make you a Christian. You must be in God's word daily. In fact, when you hear a message being taught, you should go back to those verses that they have quoted and see and to ensure that what they are saying is truth. How can you know truth if you don't know God's word? The Holy Spirit reveals truth, but you also need to know his word to know truth. And that is a problem in the church today. Many do not know God's word. Many haven't even opened the book. They simply take notes on a given Sunday. Father, I ask that again you bring that commitment back to the believer. 
back to that person that goes to church. Here's the message. But that's it. No behavior change, nothing to change on that on the Monday that comes after Sunday or the week. Even more, Father, we ask that you open the heart to that person to understand and see deception and lie. For many, many churches have deception. They preach lies. I pray, Lord, again, you open the heart of the believer to discern the lie. And that the Holy Spirit works in the heart of that person to see that deception. And then turn from it. Remove themselves from it. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.